Hello, um, I'm uh, Richard, uh, and this is this is Yaroslav. We're here to talk about uh, continuous profiling and how we think that the OpenJDK needs to adapt uh, to continuous profiling. Um, so, um, who, who are you, Yaroslav? <laughs> uh, I'm currently I'm I'm employed at Datadog. I'm a staff software engineer, and my last. 15 or over 15 years I spent in one way, one way or another involved in job profiling. Richard? Uh, so my background is more, uh, more as a user of profilers. Um, I've done a lot of performance optimization work on um, JVM-based uh, systems. Um, I've also worked on tracing at Datadog before I worked on um, profiling here. And uh, I'm also an Apache Pinot committer. Um, so yeah, we're both working together at Datadog. Um, on profiling uh, the JVM. Um, so what is continuous profiling? Um, so basically continuous profiling is profiling that you run in production. Um, and uh, it has to have very low overhead um, and it has to be very stable. And uh, that allows you to run it in production without perturbing the systems that you're actually running. So, um, you know, it's becoming an increasingly mainstream pillar of, of observability. Um, Lots of lots of vendors since um, 2019, 2020 have been uh, moving into observability. And there's a great blog post on CNCF about um, what is continuous profiling. Um, generally, the people that we meet, uh, you know, our customers that we that, that, that we speak to, they they tend to be as much um, SREs and um, development teams as as performance engineers. So, um, you know. The kind of objectives that, that 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 the users have, it might not be you know getting like the last drop of performance. It might actually be you know um, understanding what's running or uh, reducing costs, uh, but 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 not going going to the last mile. Um, and it's it's different to it's different to what you might think of profiling, where you profile offline. Um, because uh, you know there are techniques that we that we can't. Um, we can't apply when in production because the overhead's too high or it's too risky to do it uh, because we don't want to be the performance problem. Um, it's more, arguably more valuable uh, than pr um, profiling a benchmark because we're running against production load and data, and so the, the patterns in the load are different to, um, to your benchmark. If your benchmark isn't, um, isn't a good uh, approximation of your production load, then you might be stressing the wrong part of your system. Uh, so that's the real advantage of um, profiling in production is that you actually get access to uh, production data and, 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 and load. Um, so historically, uh, just as a bit of background, there are two main like types of profiler. Uh, so there's instrumentation and sampling. And so instrumentation it can be quite invasive and it modifies the program to collect data. Um, it's required for tracing. So if you do things like distributed tracing, then your, you know, your your JVM is being instrumented. Uh, the bytecode is being modified. Um, then sampling is a different approach where you know the threads are interrupted uh, periodically and uh, stack traces are captured. Uh, it's typically much lower overhead than than uh, instrumentation. Um, if you sample at 100 hertz, uh, so if you take one sample um, every 10 milliseconds of CPU time, and it takes um, uh, 10 microseconds to capture um, to, to capture uh, a, a, a stack trace, which is what it typically does take, then you're looking at 1% overhead for doing this versus potentially unbounded overhead with instrumentation because you 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 can't control the the the, the program you're instrumenting. Um, so we, uh, you know, what is a sampling profile? So we have a sampling process uh, where it decides when to take stack traces. So that can either be triggered by CPU time in a CPU profiler or wall time or memory allocated in an allocation profiler. We need to be able to unwind stacks and we need to be able to like symbolize um, the stack traces that we get, uh, which basically means mapping it to uh, met metadata. So things like frame names and method signatures. Um, and a lot of the people that, that we speak to about profiling um, wonder what kind of value that they actually get from it. Um, um, maybe, you know, everyone in your development team is like an amazing programmer and is really good at algorithms, but 
a lot of the time the performance problems are actually in the libraries and the way that you use them. Um, and these kinds of problems are incredibly easy to fix. And here's one that's actually completely open source from my background. So I, uh, Apache Helix is a cluster coordination um, pro, um, library um, which originated at LinkedIn. Uh, and it's used by Apache Pino, which is uh, an OLAP um, database which originated at LinkedIn as well. Um, so uh, I was working at a company um, working on Apache Pino, um, and I was wondering why the tests were taking so long, and I, so I decided to profile them. And this is a screenshot of a flame graph in JMC, and you can see um, that a lot of the time is in this runtime job DAG generate job list, which seems kind of unreasonable. Um, and what's actually happened here is that Apache Pino has um, create, it's basically uh, scheduling a set of jobs that it wants to schedule. And so this line, which is highlighted here, it's, it said, I want as much parallelism as you can possibly give me. So integer max value, it's an integer, it can't be more than that. So then go and go and schedule the jobs in my queue. Um, and then on the other side, the, it's assuming that the parallelism is much smaller than the number of jobs. And it doesn't even bother to check that um, the number of jobs is, um, is, uh, is, is uh, consumed entirely. And um, here's a, a, a small change, which, which basically, uh, so, so it loops up to the number of parallel jobs um, rather than the number of jobs, which is actually in the list of jobs to be scheduled. And um, you, you end up looping to doing a busy spin uh, up to integer max value in this case. And so there's actually an open source blog, uh, there's, there's a blog post about deploying the upgrade of the library at LinkedIn. You can see that this change basically explains this massive reduction in, um, in, 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 in uh, queue time for, for, for scheduling jobs. And um, it just kind of goes to show like how simple a fix like that could be. And it's the kind of thing that you might, um, you might have motivated reasoning. You might explain this away in terms of, oh, m you know, maybe it's something to do with Zookeeper. Maybe that stuff takes time. Maybe that's why this is so slow. And the profiler actually tells you why. Um, does, can you put your hands up if you know what a flame graph is? I uh, so uh, pr pretty much okay. Um, I I'll try and do this quickly. Um, so it's 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 a hierarchical uh, representation of stack traces, um, which you know popularized by Brendan Gregg. Um, so you, there's a uh, like an example program here where you have um, uh, foo calls um, foo calls uh, sleep and it calls bar and bar uh, goes into a busy spin and it sleeps um, and so these are the possible stack traces you can get from here um, you, you could get a few more because the you might see some of the uh, you, you, you might get some of the function transitions but basically th th these are the main stack traces that you'll see and so here is a CPU flame graph. So basically you can't see the ones that end up sleeping because they go off the CPU, so you don't see them in the flame graph. So it's basically one, uh, it, it's what you see here, it's, and it's, it's, it's basically a rectangle. Um, war clock, uh, you'll see the sleeps, so you'll see more structure in the, in the flame graph. Uh, you'll see a little bit of busy spin, um, uh, and these, these bars aren't, um, Proportional, but it's basically a hierarchical representation of the stack traces, which are which are relevant. So here, here's a difference side by side. Um, that um, these are some of the features that we that we that we have for uh, f you know for our customers. Uh, so we have CPU, off CPU, and allocation. Those are the main things. Um, so CPU. The, here's a flame graph from our from our UI, which basically has a has a CPU profile. Um, and on the on, on the left hand side here, you can see garbage collection. Then you can see the colourful bar in the middle is um, uh, the the web server threads uh, in Netty. And then we we've got the actual application logic, the the the, the handlers executing on the right hand side here. Um, there's no time structure to this. This is just this is all width um, uh, based on the number of samples. Um, so we don't see any off CPU. Um, activity here. So we also have a wall clock profiler, which sees things like um, uh, blocking. Uh, so like if you call future.get and it basically goes off CPU and it waits until the future is available. Um, cases where this is relevant is uh, like if you're doing reactive programming and you, you call get on a future and you, you hog an entire thread. Um, uh, so you, you, you can see that what we've got here is, um, is that, that, that blue thing was a uh, 
you know getting getting the feature um uh syscalls like e epoll wait here um those are also generally invisible to cpu profilers then allocation profiling is uh, basically you know so sampling allocations um we have some so this is where we kind of think that open jdk needs to change a little bit uh, because we have some advanced analytical features uh which are very much focused on the kind of the sre use case um endpoint aggregation which is uh, basically filtering the profile down to an endpoint so if you have a monolithic service uh, it has multiple endpoints you can filter things out uh, and the thread timeline um there's a blog post that i that i actually wrote um down here which which actually um, I, if you're interested in this um, i suggest reading it because it's, it's got a lot about how to do an analysis using these features so here you can see this flame graph uh, for endpoint aggregation is filtered down to um, get ping pong here uh, which is this from a from a test app that we uh, test different kinds of uh, profiles with um, and uh, so the key thing that this requires is we need to be able to associate all the samples that the profiler takes with uh, with the endpoint so you know we, we uh, JDK doesn't do that for us. Um, this is a thread timeline. So on the top, we have a trace. And then what we have down at the bottom is basically the physical execution of that trace. And so what we, the way this works is we associate all of the samples which have timestamps and uh, thread IDs uh, from the profile with the trace. So we have to put trace IDs basically or, or, or span IDs onto the profile samples. And then that allows us to kind of render uh, what's going on here. So this is the same endpoint. So this is like get ping pong. And basically what get ping pong is doing is it's um, uh, two threads going back back and forth between each other. One using some CPU time, that's the blue bars here. And one is um, waiting on a lock. So the lock is acquired and it uses a CPU. Then it goes off and it waits for the lock. And it's being, um, so they're ping ponging back and forth. This is very, very contrived, um, but um, you know, in real applications, th th this can be a really revealing view. And so this is another thing we need to be able to change the, um, we need to be able to record like custom fields on profile samples to be able to do this. Um, so what primitives do we actually need? So we need stack unwinding um, for profiling because uh, we need stack traces. Um, we need to be able to control uh, the, the the sample scheduling. So we need to know how to take samples. Um, we might want to do that by CPU time. We might want to do that by wall time. Um, and we the most crucial thing really is we need uh, the ability to label samples with context information because that allows cross correlation. So if I have a profile, I can link it to um, other things like traces or logs, and that helps with analyses. Um, so do you want to? Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm getting up. Don't leave, please. Oh, I'm going to be done very soon. OK, I'm here. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so how, how does this apply to what we have in Java, right? Uh, there are many profilers out there we could use out of the box, possibly, maybe. Uh, there are <laughs> most of them, they are captured in the, in, in the profilepedia by Mark Hansen, so you can go there and you can check it out. There are many, many of them. And you can you can split them into two main groups, like system profilers and runtime-assisted profilers, where system profilers have support built in, in the operating system kernel. And runtime-assisted profilers, well, as the name suggests, they are they, they need to, to have support from, from the runtime itself. Uh, an example of uh, system profilers is Perf, which is <coughs> very well known. It's a Linux only uh, utility, and you can do many cool things with that. Like it, you can get basically all hardware counters from 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 the box. You can correlate them. You can record um, very easily with a few command line uh, options like record, report. You get uh, you get nice uh, graphical report of uh, of the collected data. So th this is an example of the collected data converted to flame graph. Um, when I do a detail. You can see that for this Java process, there are no Java details. Like the, the recognizable frames, they, they end up somewhere in Java calls, call helper, which is somewhere in the JVM. But anything about that, which we would expect to have like Java details, it's perf, blah, 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 something, which is the way of the perf saying, look, I don't have the information about this frame, so I cannot 
tell you. This is the problem for us because we cannot just use perf on a, on a Java application because then we actually don't see what the Java application is doing. We see what the operating system is doing, what the library is, but not 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 Java. Uh, this is caused by the fact that in Java we don't have uh, like stable stake uh, ABI, so the perf doesn't know always how to unwind the stacks. Uh, if we add this uh, particle JVM argument, we can make it a bit easier. So the, the perf will know how to unwind the stack, but it still won't know um, how to symbolize the frames. Because, um, well, Java is JIT language. The, the symbols are not always the same, right? There is a way how to improve this slightly. There is a project, open source project called perf map, map agent, which is it's, it's hooking into JVMTI compilation events, and then it creates a map between the, the address space and the symbols, and then you can use it from, from the perf basically to, to get the symbolization. Unfortunately, for allocation profiles, we don't have even this workaround. For, uh, for perf, the allocations are completely uh, invisible because Java is not calling, or JVM is not calling any, any system calls. Uh, everything is done inside Java heap, so yeah. This is an example of, of, a, of a profile collected by perf using perf agent. So you can see the, the stack traces are much nicer, even though it's not like what you would expect from Java, it's internal, it's internal names, but you can, you can actually figure out what's happening there. Still, we are getting some um, unrecognized frames, which are caused by the fact that perf, well, even perf map agent cannot really symbolize uh, the interpreted frames because they were not compiled, we don't have the event for compilation, we cannot map it back. Uh, the eBPF is, is another uh, well, tool, it's technology actually, and it's gaining traction, which can overcome some of, some of the problems in perf with the help of like reaching inside the JVM and using some unsupported, possibly, I don't know, in the future it can go away, uh, APIs, well, they are not really APIs, uh, it's called VM structs, right? Uh, the VM structs are generated by by the JVM build, and it's it's for internal use only for serviceability agent. But it's very very useful if you want to do something like unwinding and symbolization from from EBPF. But as I mentioned, there is a the danger of the VM struct being changed or removed without any notice because it's private. Like the JDK is not promising you anything there. All these problems are stemming again from the fact that the JVM is managed runtime. So we are ha having JIT compiling, decompiling methods all the time. The methods are moving around in memory. Uh, so it's very difficult to, to, to correlate the particular memory, memory location to a symbol. On top of that, the, the advanced uh, garbage collectors, they're manipulating stack in not nice ways for you as a profiler. Uh, they need to do that in order to like really squeeze the last drop off of the performance, but for profiler uh, writers, this this is nightmare. This means the Java stack is not always in observable state. And then we have virtual threads. Virtual threads are keeping part of the stack in the heap, and you need to, yeah, you need to know how to unwind it. And currently, only JFR knows how to unwind them. That's <laughs> that's the interesting part. So. When we take a look at what support we are getting from JDM currently, we can split this into like three main groups, JMX, JFR, JVMTI, um, with the JMX being the granddad of, of profiling. So this was like way, way back, you could use JMX, you could get stack traces. It has its own problems. It's not used anymore in, in any, any definitely not in continuous profiling, but you can still find it in tools like uh, Visual VM which is based on this. Uh, JFR events, well, JFR is JDK flight record. It's kind of like, uh, if you imagine like uh, airplane black box, like J JVM is recording all the details, what is happening there. So what, one of the, the events recorded by J JFR is execution sample, which can be used as a, as a pro approximation of, of a CPU profile. So yeah, it does take uh, stack traces of the threads. Uh, the threads are, executing 
randomly. Here's an example of how the, the, the sampling is actually being carried out. So let's imagine we have nine threads, two of them are currently blocked. So JFR is, uh, is keeping a pointer to, to the next thread to sample. So now we are entering the sample, sample step. So JFR will take uh, the next five threads by default, which are not blocked. Well, it's simplified, they're, they are runnable, but simplified, they are not blocked, and you will get this as a sample of the, of the CPU activity. After that, the JFR will move the pointer to the, th to the thread after the last one and mark it as the next thread to sample, and in follow-up step, it, it will start again. So the thread T2, it got unblocked, so it will be included in the sampling. So we will do sample, and it's round robin fashion. So when the JFR gets at the end of the, of the thread list, it will just go back to the beginning, and yeah, you got the point. Um, the problem is that this won't unwind native stacks at all, and it won't even report that it failed to unwind native stacks, so th th this is skewing the statistics. So it's, uh, it, it's a bit difficult to actually to reconstruct the, 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 the behavior of the application, like upscaling the samples to, to, to the CPU time used. Um, also, there are issues that it's sampling in a runnable state, so there is no, no, no direct correlation between the CPU time spent and the samples. And also, the, the, there is the, some sampling error in the fact that there is a delay between picking up the thread to be sampled and the sampling. So if, if the threads are getting like scheduled on schedule very frequently, you can miss some of them some of the times. It's, uh, the, the, this, this is particularly painful for uh, reactive applications. Uh, the execution sample is pretty nicely visualized in, uh, in, in the JMC, like JDK Mission Control. If you haven't tried that, just go there, it's, it's amazing too. Uh, and for off CPU support, like the wall clock, there is well, there's something, but it's not it's not perfect. There is no generic vocal profiler for uh, for JFR. There is again approximation via native method sample. Uh, that native method sample it has like a bunch of limits. One of them is like the, the sample will be taken only when there is JNI call involved. So it's like yeah, almost, but not. Uh, but on the other hand, the JFR is very generous with the uh, with the different low level events which you can actually use to reconstruct the, the off CPU activity. But yeah, the downside is that you need, to, you, need, you need to put everything together manually. But we have, we have information about GC, JIT compilation, save points. We have information about uh, blocking, park, thread parking, whatnot. You can use even thresholds on that so you don't get swamped by, by many, many events. So this is quite, quite okay, I'd say. <laughs> Uh, for allocation profiling, JFR is uh, providing pretty good quality allocation profiler, but still it's TLAB uh, size biased. So the TLAB is um, is a kind of optimization for thread local allocation. If you want to read more, it's like uh, you can you can go and, and check Alexey Shipilev's uh, blog post about this. He goes into very details of the TLAB. But the bottom line is that we are doing the, the sampling at the TLAB boundaries. So when the TLAB fills up, let's say 256K, then we take the sample. But this means we are not taking samples and anywhere between. Uh, there are no possibility that the, the, the allocation is too big for the TLAB, and that time we will take the sample for each of those allocations. So yeah, you see the, po like the, the problem, like we are getting skew in, in the sampling there. But uh, in, uh, in reality, it's, it's quite usable, and the skew is not causing that many troubles. Um, a bonus in JFR is event extensibility. You can, just, you can create your own events. You can record whatever information you want. It's very easy. You just add a new Java class, and then you annotate it. And you are done. JFR will automatically pick it up, and it will be included in, in, the, in the recordings. Uh, if you are adventurous and you, you like coding in C, C++, you can use JVMTI. In JVMTI, we have something to get stack trace. Unfortunately, it has the same limits as, as the JMX. That means that it's safe point biased. Um, and it's, uh, it's not the state of the art for, for sampling profilers. 
And to, to add insult to injury, it's not safe to call in signal handler because it, yeah, it, it does allocation, it, 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 is, uh, it is accessing JVM internals. So we cannot use it from a, from a signal handler like for CPU profiler. This is alleviated by async at call trace. Probably you didn't hear about async at call trace. It's supposed to be hidden, uh, non-public, uh, non-supported API. It was added many, many years ago for like Sun, uh, Sun Microsystem internal performance uh, tool, but somehow it got it escaped, and now it's it's a, it's the base of all like serious profilers in in the Java Java land. So uh, profiles like async profiler, honest profiler. They, they are using async get call trace. It's good enough. Well, it's perfect. You get, you get unbiased samples. You can, you can uh, capture samples in, in the signal handler. But the problem is not being supported. Uh, it can crash from time to time. So yeah, for continuous profiling, it's not perfect. For off, offline profiling, it was, it was pretty acceptable. And it may be removed in the future. Again, no promise is done. It's not public API. Whatever can happen. And with this, I leave the podium and I let the Richard talk. Yeah. So the next section is about how our profiler actually works. Um, so it's deployed as a Java agent, which is integrated with our tracer, um, and that's kind of a very important part of, of of our product because it makes it very easy to correlate with with traces. So if you're looking at a trace and you want to explain why the trace is, is uh, took longer. Um, than you'd like, uh, you can link it to the profile data. Um, so we have to work around some of the limitations of you know what the what the JVM gives us. Um, uh, we run on uh, J9, for instance. J9 doesn't have JFR, so we can't use JFR there. Uh, but we'll use JFR whenever we can uh, because it's it's got lots of. Um, uh, useful stuff in it. It's open source, um, so you can you, you can always go and read the code. Um, so yeah, we 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 we, we use JFR when possible because it's kind of uh, the way JFR has been written. It's uh, you know manual instrumentation in um, deep places in the JDK where it'd be very difficult to access with any other um, with any other technique. Um, you know, very low level, easy to customize, um, but. The problem is that the, the 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 closest thing it has to a CPU profiler, which is um, which is the execution sample events, um, isn't really a CPU profiler. Uh, it it, uh, it drops uh, samples when um, it drops samples when uh, you know there are native stacks or the JVM is in certain states and it doesn't report that there's an error. So it's it's basically impossible to infer how much CPU time uh, was used. And as Yaris I've said, it doesn't use CPU time to schedule the samples. So it's uh, it, it, it's very difficult to reason about. Uh, so it, it's got very poor statistics. So yeah, async profiler has basically a state of the art um, CPU profiler in it, um, which is based on. Um, something in Linux, perf events. So perf events will allow you to basically set up a timer uh, for a, a particular event. And when um, you can do that at like thread or process ID level, but an async profiler does it at thread level. So it um, uh, basically sets up a CPU timer for, 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 for each thread. And when there's been 10 milliseconds, it'll create an interrupt that'll lead to a signal being generated. And then in that signal handler, um, it calls uh, async get call trace. Um, so we uh, needed to customize this to do the kind of the tracer integration. So we actually have a fork of async profile. There's also a load of stuff in async profile that we just don't need. Um, so we removed that to reduce uh, re reduce binary size. Um, and it's built by Andrew Pangan, um, who is um, at AWS and did a lot of amazing stuff in, in profiling. So we're, we're basically standing on the shoulders of giants there. Um, but the most important thing about our fork is these labeled samples. So we call it profiling context, and this is the uh, really the most important part of the profiler because um, it allows correlation with with other data sources, and it allows um, uh, going from you know the, the flame graph to something a bit more detailed, like a like a timeline where you can really debug performance problems. Um, yeah. This is a CPU profiler. It has uh, this profiling context um, based on perf. perf. Um, 
wall clock. Uh, so we did quite a lot of work on the wall clock profiler. Uh, there is one in async profiler, but we mostly rewrote it. Um, so we rewrote it to do basically uh, reservoir sampling on the um, on the threads. Um, the problem with wall clock profiling versus CPU profiling is that you've probably, you, well, you absolutely have um, a finite number of CPUs. So you might have eight or 32 or something like that, but you can have thousands of threads. Um, so if we want to sample the threads uh, and you've got lots of threads, then uh, there's a limited number of samples we can take because there's, o there's an overhead associated with each sample that we do. Um, we need to have a good way to you know, uh, bias towards relevance. So we actually have the tracer um, inter interact with the profiler here to manage a, a bit set of thread IDs, um, which um, which then we run reservoir sampling over. So every time every time a trace becomes associated with a thread in in in, in, in your application, then it becomes that thread becomes eligible for wall clock profiling. And when it uh, when it's no longer associated with a trace. Um, and it's no longer eligible, um, and this this gives us a very low overhead way of like controlling um, controlling how many threads we sample and maximizing the, re the, the 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 relevance of what we do sample. And every time we take a sample, we get we get labels, which is kind of like the repeating theme here. Um, the allocation profiler is based on JVMTI, and we label every single allocation sample that we take with the with the context, so we can do things like tell you what the allocation rate is by endpoint. So you may have some endpoints which don't allocate very much and others which, which, which allocate a lot. And uh, being able to apply this context is, 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 is a key point here. Um, context, context, context. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of the message of this talk. Um, so what, what, what's actually missing? Um, so we don't actually have in the JVM, we don't have good enough stack unwinding. So it can only do Java stacks. Um, it won't do uh, it won't do native stacks at all. So it's very likely that you're actually linking like Rust code or C++ code these days. Um, if you're doing like if you're using a compression library, JFR will not tell you about the CPU time used by the compression library because it's almost certainly a JNI call. Um, it'll just pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, if the JVM is doing in certain states, then JFR won't 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 give you um, won't, 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 won't give you stacks. Um, and it just doesn't have a way uh, to um, doesn't have a way to apply context. And th this is actually Yaroslav's blog here. So Yar Yaroslav has built a prototype of how to apply context to, to, to JFR, so that you can do the kind of uh, slicing and dicing on JFR data that that, that we do at Datadog. And this uh, Yaroslav would like to um, start a new Open JDK project. Um, so there's there's been a a, a link set out. To kind of um, uh, invite um, people from the community to uh, to, to 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 help uh, modernize some of the profiling APIs that are available uh, in, in in the JVM, so we can we can do continuous profiling, and actually um, other companies can do continuous profiling like, like like we're doing, and basically commoditize some of these features that we've built. And there's a there's a link to a call call for discussion here. Uh, so if anybody's interested in that, then um, take a look at the QR code and go and share your thoughts. Um, right. So you know, as as a continuous profiling vendor, we're basically making the best of what's available to us. Uh, but it feels at times that there's there's just not enough support from the platform. Uh, we've looked at going outside of the JVM, but it's impossible to, as, as we've said, it's impossible to do things like allocation profiling outside the JVM. Um, and the features that we're, we're actually deploying, I mean, this, this isn't a sales pitch, they're actually wildly popular with our customers. Um, we, we engage with our customers a lot and they, they tell us how useful some of these features are on, on, in places like Slack. Um, we have thousands of users uh, Doing this and, and telling us that this is this is um, really useful. Um, so th this isn't the the kind of enhancements we want to make to to Open JDK. They're, they're, they're not theoretical. They're um, they're, they're they're real world. Um, and um, yeah, we, we 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 need to synchronize community effort to to um, take some of these features from you know that we've built and and, and kind of give them to the the, the community. 
Uh, so yeah, thanks for your attention. If if, if there's any questions about and uh, yep. Right, so so mission control isn't really a profiler. Uh, so there's there's m mission control. Um, you can you can use mission control to um, to start a JFR recording. It'll go and um, take the recording the .jfr file out of that, and it'll load it into into a profile at the end. But it can also take pro it can take Datadog profiles. It can take uh, so you can load Datadog profiles in in mission control. I mean, I could do that right now. Um, uh, I probably shouldn't actually. Um, yeah, uh, no, but and it, 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 it can take profiles from async profilers. So, so long as they're in the JFR format, then mission, cro mission control will open them. Could could you repeat the first uh, cr cr cross systems? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So I mean, at, yeah. I, I I think we should we should repeat the question for the recording. Yeah. So for the recording, uh, w what do we think about cross cross systems continuous profiling? So where you have a large fleet of JVMs and you 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 well that's actually what Datadog does. So we put a, J a Java agent into every single one of your you know JVMs, uh, and so then. We take all the profiles, and then in the back end, they get aggregated together. So um, uh, you basically get a flame graph, which is aggregated across the entire system. And you can drill down to pod name or, 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 or service or you know host. Um, so you, you can you can slice and dice. But um, that's one of the advantages. It's like, do you really want to be logging into a particular system to take a JFR recording? I, I don't know if well, it's, 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 it's manual, and it's, uh, maybe you can't do that in, you know, everywhere. I, I just want to point out, like, uh, you can you can go to to data booth here, and you can ask a person there to to give you like walkthrough of profiling. And I think they would be very happy. I have some colleagues there from profiling. I <laughs> yeah, but we, 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 uh, this actually wasn't a sales pitch. So I should I, the, 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 there's there's other uh, like Red Hat does this. They have a Cryostat agent does the same thing. So they you can install the Cryostat agent in all of your um, uh, VMs and. Um, uh, it'll aggregate the profiles together in the in, in the back end. Okay. Yep. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Th thank you.